I'm ready. Okay, right. Good morning, everybody. Or it might be afternoon wherever you are, because I know that you're all across the world and you all come in on Zoom, which is amazing technology, so that you could be able to do something creative. Um, what are we going to do today? So I'm going to get what I'm going to do is I'm going to get Rachel. You're going to stop looking at my face. You're going to look at the table in my hands, and then we're going to have a look at what we're going to make today. So I'm going to bring the camera up so you can see. There we are. We're going to make these little chicken weights and they're really it's a great little project to do for an hour. Um, I'm going to hand sew them, actually, but you might want to use a sewing machine. It's entirely down to you. Um, but it is something that if you're on holiday, you might be in a caravan, you could be in a tent. And it's a little project that you could do just by hand. So it doesn't you don't necessarily have to do this at your kitchen table or in your workshop. You can just do this by hand and I've made two here but you'll probably make one in the session. Um, I filled mine with rice um, because the idea is that you put them down on your patterns and so then you can then it holds the pattern down and then you can cut around your pattern and you're not pinning to it it's just weighted it just weights it down when you want to cut it. But also you can use them like ouch poor little thing you can use them for putting pins in so you can put your pins in there as well so they sort of become both pattern weights, but they become pin cushions also. So that's what you can use them for. I'm gonna put them to one side. Hopefully you, apart from Claire, hopefully, um, and it's quite easy, you have downloaded a pattern and really it's just a template. And though I've given you the square of the layout, how it has to look when we're going to stitch it together, um, it, the dimensions are really easy. So this dimension for the main bit of the body, I've done four and a quarter inch by four and a quarter inch. But just bear in mind that you can change the size of all of this. You can make bigger ones. You can make tiny little ones. It's entirely down to you. If you don't want to like measure out and cut the, um, uh, the pattern itself, what you can do is you can put that just back in your printer and maybe just photocopy it out, maybe 75% to make it smaller. You might want to take it up to 125% to make it bigger. So you can change the size by using a photocopier or your printer at home also, as well as just measuring and just increasing the sizes. So I've asked if you could possibly just cut out your pieces. Now, some of you may not have had a chance to do this, but you will have a chance to catch up. So you're gonna cut two for the fabric body. So the body, let's bring the right, that one in. So the fabric of the body is two squares, as I said, four and a quarter by four and a quarter inches, um, centimeter wise. Let's just do that for the centimeter people. So centimeters is 11 centimeters by 11 centimeters. So we try and work in both measurements. So, um, so we've got 11 centimeters by four and a quarter inches, depending on how you like to work. Um, what we need to do first of all is we need to just have our squares out in front of us like that and we also need to think about where we're going to put the eye. Um, the eye is really is here so it can be one of these little sort of like little child sort of toy eyes or if you want to you can use a button it's entirely down to you. I went and bought some of these you get a pair for 50p and they just clip on the back and I'll show you how that goes in or you might just have a button that you're going to use for the eye. So we're going to mark on the piece of fabric where that goes. So if you have both bits squares in front of you like that, and if you think you've got your pattern here, what you need to do is make a little mark. I'm going to use one of these little pens that disappear with heat, but you might use a little bit of chalk or you might just put um, a little dot with a biro. It's entirely down to you. Now, to help you transfer marks, when you've got anything on a pattern that you need to transfer through is you just put a pin there and you put the pin down hold it down and lift the paper up and where the pin is underneath then you can put the mark so I'm going to just put a little dot for now under there so I'm going to do the same for the other side of the square so what we've got to remember is we're going to just flip the pattern over and we're going to just do it like so and we're just going to put we can see the hole we're going to put that through there the pin there we can see the mark and then we can then just make a mark with a pen biro a little bit of chalk just a little dot okay so i'm going to let you all do that because i'm not going to race ahead so you're going to have your two bits your two squares of fabrics which i've given you the dimensions you're just going to put a little dot up in the corner here if you haven't got the pattern in front of you to do that if i just measure for you to let you know how far in i've come so i've come in three quarters of an inch in from the corner and made a dot, or if we're going into centimeters, 
that is nearly two centimeters, so two centimeters in from the top and the bottom, and it's roughly about there. But if you make your two little marks there, that will get your just the position for your either your eye or for um, for a button to to do that with. So once you've marked your position, to think about what is what you're going to put on. Is it going to be the button or is it going to be one of these eyelets? Now you've got to sew it onto the right side. And one other thing you need to think about, you're going to be stitching along here and down. You don't want it on in really in the pathway where you're stitching. So imagine if you were not, it's probably easier if you hand stitch, but if you were using a sewing machine, as the little foot comes along here, you don't want it getting caught or stopping you coming across and down this direction. So when you're putting the, what's going to be the eye, think about, about giving yourself enough space to stitch around and down. So that's what you need to think. Now with the eye, you could stitch that on with the same color thread. So you could stitch that on with um, black thread. Or if you wanted to, you could be a bit creative and you could think, well, I'm gonna pop that button, that little black button down and I might use the red from the, um, from the fabric background and stitch that in red. Or I might pick up maybe a yellow that we might use for the beak or something like that. So it doesn't necessarily have to be in the same color. If you're using one of these like little toy eyes, if you've never used one of these before, they like push on, but you need to make a hole through the fabric. Now I'm gonna make, um, I've got a braddle here, so to make the hole, but you could use a very sharp little point of scissors. You don't want to rip the fabric completely when you do that, but you need to be able to just push it through. And you need to, I'm just gonna get a bit of felt. You need to push it through, not directly onto your best dining room table or even really onto a cutting mat like this is going to be, um, you could damage it. What you need is a, like a little bit of soft underneath. So maybe a little bit of felt. You could use a, a rubber actually, a rubber's really handy to put underneath or a piece of cork. And then you're going to just put your bridle or your sharp piece of scissors through and you're just going to make a hole so it just goes through. And then you're just going to increase that hole until you've got a reasonably sized hole that you can see through, but then you can just put the, the little popper through that that's just gonna go through. I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger so that it will go through, but it's not too loose and gonna fall out again. So you're just gonna put that through. If you're using a button, you don't have to worry about making a hole. You'll just be sewing it on. So everyone's probably at this stage thinking about what the eye is going to be. So you just push that through. And once it goes, it just pops through to the fabric and that eye is there. But to anchor it down, there's the back to that. And then you just push that on and it's secure in place. So that one and then do the other one. I try and keep, when I'm doing it, I try and keep mirrored so I know that I haven't suddenly put the eye in the wrong location over here. So these two eyes need to be mirroring each other and need to look at each other as we're doing it. So I'm just gonna do the other one. So I'm just gonna put the bridle through the fabric, carefully push it through to make a hole big enough so I can put that little post of the eye through. Like so. It's funny, sometimes you have to go through a couple of times with the bridle just to get that large enough just to take the little post of the eye through. And there we are, and then that one pops on and it's quite secure, it's not gonna come off. So if you are thinking of perhaps making these as, it could become a toy. So it might be that you're giving it to a young person and you're not maybe filling it with rice, you might fill in it with stuffing or whatever. These eyes are quite safe. Um, I say probably wouldn't give them to a baby, but once for a young child, they really, once they're on, they're not gonna necessarily come off. So um, you can try those. So you can see they're well in position. I'm well away from the seam that I'm going to be stitching. So um, they're all really ready to go. I'll give you just maybe a little, just a little bit more time because you might be trying to catch up with your sewing your buttons on before I start thinking about maybe doing the beak, positioning the beak, the wattle and the comb. Okay, so now I'm going to just cut out, you may have already cut out your beak and your wattle and your comb, 
Um, but I'm going to cut them out for in front of you so you can see what I did. Um, you don't have to cut a jagged edge across the top of the, um, the comb if you don't want to. But I thought it's, it's quite nice. And it's an opportunity for me to use my um, pinking shears. And what I did actually was I act cut a, just a straight line to start with my pinking shears. And then I lined up the little, there we are, you can see that. I lined up the, um, just the comb to where I've put the, zag, the jagged lines, which is the top of the comb to that line there. I'm just gonna pin it. And then I cut the rest of it to shape. What's I lovely about um, felt is there is no grain within, so it doesn't matter which direction you cut or lay a pattern on felt because it's all just, um, it's all in one um, sort of like mass of fibers. It's not going to make any difference if you have it in a different direction. So that's the comb. With the wattle, the wattle is actually, because there's two, if I show you on the, the made up one, if you look at the wattle, can you see from the front, it actually opens up like it would on a proper chicken, like it would there. So there's two of those. And what I've done with that is I've, and on the pattern, I've said, if you just cut it on the fold. So really, if you imagine it, it's looks like a heart shape when you finish. If you fold a piece of red felt in half, you put your pattern piece on top like that, pin it, and then cut it out. You've then got that shape to insert into the seam when we make the chicken up. So I'm just gonna cut round that. Go round, round, round like that. And if you have a look, when I take it out, it actually is just really like a sort of heart, a heart shape with a blunt end. So that's what becomes the wattle. So there's your little wattle shape from that pattern piece. I put the little scrap out of the way. And the beak, back to the final piece. The beak, actually, if you look at it, it's that triangle, but the triangle is folded in half. So I've cut a large triangle piece. Actually, I might use my other scissors for that. So I'm gonna cut that larger triangle, like so, out of a piece of yellow felt. That. And there's my beak, and we're going to use the beak is then folded that way in half. So you've got the long end here, this long edge, and we're going to fold it that way in half. I'll go through that again in a minute. If you haven't got felt, you can use fabric. The only thing that happens with fabric, it might tend to fray a little bit, but you might use something that doesn't fray too much. But felt's probably the ideal one to use for this project. I'm going to put the, the tiny little pattern pieces to one side and I've just got my cutout pieces. I think at this stage I'll have a, a thumbs up from everyone that we're all on a stage where we're ready to now start putting these up. So if you're happy where we are at the moment, put your thumbs up. If you've got any questions at this moment, please ask. Um, you can type them in or you can ask if you unmute yourself and I will um, just wait for you or catch you up or give you the answer to your question. Rachel, does everyone look like they're okay? Everyone looks like they're okay. Jan is thumbing up. Colette's thumbing smiling. Good. <laughs> as, a, as a new monkey, we like smiles. Good. That's what we <laughs> like. New monkey with smiles. <laughs> okay, then. So if we're all quite happy where we are at the moment, we've got either got the two eyes, which are either buttons or eyes like this, already positioned on the right side of the fabric. We've got our little bits of felt cut out. And I've got some pins in front of me, but also to help you, I'd say go back and have a look at your pattern. And what I want you to look at, I'm gonna just slide that under there so you can see. This is, I've done a layout plan to think how it's got to be laid out. So imagine that that's that. That's like that with the eye facing up that way. The wattle needs to go up here, like so. The beak is folded in half, and then the beak like that. The beak has to go there. And then the wattle has to go like that underneath, doesn't it? So that's how we're going to do it. So we've got what we've got to do is actually flip it back on itself so that we've then trapped it into the seam. So when we pull it out, it looks like that. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm just going just to get the little comb at the top and I'm just going to position that. Now I've positioned it a quarter of an inch or half a centimeter away from this edge, this right hand edge, because if I was to position it to right to the corner there, I'm gonna have a seam that's gonna go across the top and down, and then it will trap it completely in, like it will be trapped both sides. We want that to be free. So move it 
I would say actually a little bit more than quarter of an inch or half a centimetre. Move it back a little bit. I'll show you on the, fi on the final one. Can you see there, if I just hold him there, can you see his little comb is probably a fraction away from that corner? And you, so you don't want to catch any of this as you sew it along and down, that you only want to catch it once. You don't want to catch this bit and you don't want to, and then the beak is very similar. So let's just, with a couple of pins, just make sure we've positioned him quite well, well away from that quarter of an inch seam allowance there. So I'm just going to put on one side for the moment, I'm just going to put a couple of pins just to hold that in position. And I'd say, put a couple of pins in because they do, there is a tendency for it to all move around while you're doing this. So try and just think, I will just pin that into place. The same with the beak. So the beak doesn't go right to the top. It's at least a little bit further than quarter of an inch or half a centimetre down. So we're going to then, and we're going to flip it back on itself, like so. Don't worry if you've lost your way thinking, oh, what's Gary talking about? I'm going to just, I'm going to pin it all in position and then I'm going to wait for you all to get yours in position at the same time. So we can all start off because there's nothing worse than racing ahead and then someone's left behind. So there's the beak. So the beak was uh, facing right. Now I flipped it towards the left. So when I stitch it, it's going to be trapped. Next is the wattle. So remember, we've got that little heart. Now the heart, we're going to have the heart upside down and we're going to fold it in half. And again, we want that to get trapped into the seam. And so that can go just under the beak. So you can just trap that. And in fact, it can touch. You can have it touching the edge of that beak down there, making sure you line it up to the seam and you're just going to pin that in position there and there. And then I'm gonna leave that to show you again so you can think, ah, oh, it's the same as what Gary's done. So if I leave that on there, can you see? We've done the comb first, so we've positioned the comb more than quarter of an inch, half a centimetre away from this corner here, and then we folded it down, pinned that into place. We then got the beak, we folded the beak in half, and then we, then we again, more than quarter of an inch, half a centimetre from the top, and we folded it towards the left. Then the wattle, which is the upside down heart, we folded in half, we touched the edge of the beak here, and then we fold that to the left. So we should all be in position. Shall we just check everyone's okay with that? I think we do a thumbs up that you're all okay with the first bit of pinning, you're ready to go. So Rachel will have a quick check, see how that you're all okay. If you're not, I'm thinking, can you show me again, Gary? No problem, I'll show you again. Okay, lots of thumbs up. Pauline, do you want to show us your, your just... Um... Oh, well done, yes, that's it. A little piece there, brilliant. Lovely, I love the fabric. Thank you. It's a, a piece of scrap liberty. Oh, it's going to be a very posh chicken. Posh, a, posh, <laughs> a posh chicken. Definitely uh, going to going to lay free range eggs. That one. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's liberty. Uh, lovely. Thank you, Polly. Um, let me just continue to spotlight Gary again. There we go. Right. Uh, Okay, so we seem to be all okay where we are so far. Right, so now what we've got to do is we've got to now trap this inside with this. So we've got still got right side together. I've still got the eye up here at the top here and the eye, so when I flip over, eyes or buttons should be touching. So they should be in the same position. We don't want it the eye one eye down here. We need both eyes at the top in the same position. So when we open up, they look the same. Now. What you now need to do is you now need to just put a few pins just to secure the top. So we're just going to just stitch along here. So we're just going to put that there. We're just going to position along there like so. Some position, just to hold it in position. So one square is over the top of the other and we're not, it's not going to shift around too much. Okay. There, I'm going to leave it back in that position as well. So we've just sort of, we've got that ready to go. Now, at this stage, you could decide, are you going to ha hand sew it, which I'm going to do, because it's quite a nice thing to do on a Sunday morning, a nice little bit of hand stitching, I'm going to stitch around it, or are you going to use your sewing machine? If you're going to use your sewing machine, um, just be mindful that you've got that all really nice and flat as you're going through. It's so much easier with hand stitching, because you can just, you can feel as you go through. Um, you might want to tack it, 
before you machine stitch it is entirely down to you. I think with the first one, I'm going to hand stitch. After that, once you've practiced them, you can do loads, but you can use a sewing machine if you want to. We're only going to stitch for the moment three sides. So we're going to come, we're going to start down at the bottom here. We're going to stitch up here and stitch across. We're going to stitch down. Now, I know this might seem really, really obvious, but I'm going to just talk to you about threading your needle. <laughs> so um, I've already pre-threaded it, but I'll do another one. So when you use thread from a reel of thread, cotton, um, there is a right and a wrong end to a piece of cotton. This end, which is coming from the reel, is the front end of the cotton. And round the spool to the very last bit of cotton or thread on there is the back end. Now, sometimes when you hand sew, you'll find that it gets caught up and it keeps snagging. It's probably because you've threaded the thread back to front. Now, if I explain that, so if you don't cut your thread until you've threaded your needle, we're just going to do single thread, we're not doubling it up. So you're going to thread your needle, Lucky I've got my glasses on. And it's always easier to thread with the, the needle through something. So you're looking towards maybe a piece of paper. Rather than holding it up to the light, you take it down and you look through a piece of paper or something behind it. And it makes it far much easy, easier to thread, as well as good light and putting your reading glasses on if you need to have glasses. Now you're going to thread the thread through. Now, what my little rule of thumb is, I hold the needle and thread in my um, fingers, and then the little extra strand just goes past my wrist. But then the rest of it just goes to my elbow, and then I cut. There is no point in having reams and reams of thread, because you think, well, I've got to get all the way around there, so I'm just going to cut loads of thread. It actually would take you longer to keep pulling that thread through rather than stop, change, get more thread. So that's my little rule of thumb. And just remember, there is always a right and a wrong end to a, a piece of thread. It's the way it's spun. So the way that the thread is spun and it's like a corkscrew. So the corkscrew can go through the fabric. But if you try and put a corkscrew back to front, it just keeps snagging. So just remember that. I'm gonna just leave that needle there and I've got this one here ready to go. So thinking about how you're going to thread or what sort of thread or um, sewing method you're going to use to sew these up. I'm gonna start on this far end here and I'm just going to just really nice tiny little stitches because especially if I'm gonna fill it with like rice or something that's grainy, it's going to come out if it's not too small a stitches. So you're just going to anchor your stitch in about a quarter of an inch to half a centimeter seam allowance and I'm just going to, you might, some of you might prefer to put a knot when you anchor, but I'm just going to put a couple of stitches through. And I'm just going to stitch to the top and I'm going to make sure that these are all kept together and I can feel the little pieces underneath. I'm going to carefully stitch through those and get to the top and I'm going to go along and down again. But I'll talk you through that as we go along. I'll get Rachel to check that you're all okay as we just start stitching the little um, chicken round down the side. So I'm just doing a little tiny little, almost like just a tiny little running stitch, very close together. Um, yeah, I have just stitched up this far corner to that point there. And what I'm gonna do before I come down this side here, I'm gonna take my pins out because the pins inside are gonna get trapped inside. So I just, just think you wanna get access to the pins. So I've got to take the pins out. At that point, when you're doing that, you can also check, especially if you've hand sewn it, that it's all in position. And it's starting to actually, look, it is starting to work. So that's fine. Just make sure you've got the pins out because there's nothing worse than trying to turn something through that's still got the pins left in. And then I'm gonna just sew down this far end, leaving this bottom open. So you need to keep that one end open for stuffing later. So I'm nearly there. So we're just gonna finish going down this far end. Um, and then we'll be ready to then turn him through. So I'm just gonna catch it and do that. So we'll carry on sewing. And we'll carry on with the conversation, <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> okay, have we all got stitched round, all round the outside, but we've left this bottom bit left open. Now, I, if you haven't, it's fine. You can carry on sewing, but I'll just show you the next stage, what we need to do. Now, there's a couple of corners. We're just gonna snip the corners off. So just a little corner up here by the eye. I'm just gonna take just a little bit of the corner off. I'm not gonna go too close to the stitches, but it just cuts down on the bulk. And then this end, I'm gonna take that out on those two corners here at the end here. Now, 
what I can do is I'm going to just, the bottom that's opened, I'm going to just finger press, or you might have an iron by the side of you. I'm just going to turn that bottom edge over, almost like a turn up, and I'm going to turn it up a quarter of an inch. So I'm just going to turn it up gently with my fingers. If you're using cotton fabric, it usually you can finger press it quite well. But if you're using um, a poly cotton or some other fabric, sometimes you need to just press that with an iron because it doesn't always finger press too well. So I'm just going to just put that like so. And I've just turned that up a quarter of an inch along the bottom. If you need to just put the iron on it, I've got a little iron here to the side. I can just give that a little press. It just helps you later when we're going to then just hand stitch this later. So I've done that. Then I'm going to turn it through. So I'm going to turn the chicken shape through like so. And I say, and I would say, don't use your scissors to push the corners out because the tendency is this point of the scissors can go all the way through. A little handy thing to have in your toolbox of kit is a chopstick because the chopstick is blunt at the end and then you can just push that like top little corner out there and you can push that little corner out there. If you haven't got a chopstick, you might have a pen. So you might have just an ordinary pen and just use the blunt end and just help the corner out with that. But I find a little chopstick is really handy just to push the corners out. But you don't have to be too, too precious about how far they come out. So hopefully you've pulled him out and everything is in the right position. Nothing's upside down, nothing's got caught. If it has, just go turn it inside out again, unpick it and just push it back and then re-stitch it so that you've got it. Now, if you have a look, the chicken is almost like triangular. It's a bit like a pyramid in a way, but a three-sided pyramid. So I'm just gonna leave that there so you get the idea. Now to do that, what you've got to do is you've got to have the beak facing you. So you're looking at him straight on and then you're going to take this bottom bit and you're going to pull it open that way. So I'll do that again. So at the moment he's flat. He's like, think about the pyramid. So think about how do I create a pyramid? At the moment, this is a um, almost like the hieroglyphics of an Egyptian chicken. So he's flat against the wall, but you want to make this 3D. So make the chicken face you. So you're looking him straight in the eye. You're going to go back to that opening and you're going to take the middle of each opening and you're going to open that way. And that then, if you can then just keep that in that position, I want you then to put like almost like put that side seam to that side seam there, like so. And I'm going to just put that seam to that seam like that. So I've got it's like that. So can you see we've now made a little three-sided pyramid. Now, we're going to, before we stitch it up, we're going to fill it with whatever filling we've got. But I'm just going to put a couple of pins just at the far corners, just so it just makes life a little bit easier. I'm just going to put a pin there. And I'm going to come across here. I'm going to just put a little pin like so in there. And that just hold that little um, edge to edge together while because we're going to fill through here we're going to put rice in down there now this is probably where it gets very messy so i'm going to put rice in with my spoon i'm going to put rice in other things you could use you could use clean dry cat litter you could use a very fine washed gravel um you could just put wadding inside if you wanted to um, um way back when i was at uh, my very first textile course I had, um, and she was called Mrs. Taylor, and she taught me how to just start really get um, doing some nice tailoring work. And it was only a um, national diploma course. And she came along once a week to show us. She gave us all a little pin cushion and she had stuffed her pin cushion with bran. So just ordinary, not cereal bran that you have in a packet, but just bran that you might get from the pet store or somewhere like that. And she said that bran is the best thing to keep your pins dry and rust free so just bear in mind if you come across some bran maybe get like a maybe a, a few ounces of bran maybe half a pound and then you could make some little pin cushions and stuff it with bran and then put your pins in that because apparently that is the best thing for pins it keeps them sharp and it keeps them dry i'm going to use my long grain rice so i'm going to put my long grain rice in and as i said this is the point where you could get into a bit a bit messy so don't try and shove it all in at once just a small amount at a time and just put that into the bag so it's depending on how much you want to put in i filled up my bag 
well, reasonably full. I need enough so um, it's going to sink to the bottom so I can close that um, little opening there without getting the content out again. So you need to give yourself enough to that it's a nice weight and it's filling out the chicken, but also that it's not filled right up to the top that you're just getting rice everywhere where you try and sew it closed. So I think I've got to about my limit. I might be, I might be able to just sneak one more in. A little bit more, there you go. That'll do, that'll do, okay? There you are, can you see that? I've got a little gap there. So I've got a tiny little pocket, a bag of rice. Now, what you can do now is hold it again, close it, line up those two little seams there and put at least put a pin there. <laughs> Excuse me, and we're going to just put that there and there. But you can sit there flat on your table. And now we're going to close that. You could just run that a little straight stitch along the end to close that. But why not, with your needle and thread, have a go at doing a nice little what I would call a whip stitch? So a whip stitch is a little like a stitch that nicely closes, but almost slightly mm, can be seen, can't be seen. It's slightly invisible. So you'll start from one end and come in one corner and just anchor your thread down like so, a couple of little, let's get that to anchor there. And what you're gonna go is you go from one side to the other. So you pick one stitch up one side, a bit of thread one side and one the other. So one bit of fabric one side and go and get it in. Sometimes it's better, I'm doing it far away from me, but it's actually better to have it nearer to you while you're sewing it. So you're just picking up one side of the fabric and you're picking up the other side. And as you go along, that will start to close that hole up. And of course, obviously, if you've got rice or something that's grainy, you've got to make sure that you really close it up because you don't want every time you use it, bits of rice popping out all over your work surface. So it's best to get that to close that as best you can. As you move along, I move my pins out of the way because the pins will have a tendency to just as you're putting your little um, stitches through to catch it. So hopefully you can have a go at doing that. If not, as I say, if you find that, oh, I'm not sure about that, it's a little bit difficult. You can just do some really tiny little running stitches along the edge just to close it. So we're nearly there now. There's something about hand sewing that I really enjoy. I love to just hand sew. It's lovely to machine, obviously, machining is great. It's a good way, it's quick, it's strong, it will do the job. But hand stitching is just very nice and gentle and just a nice thing to do. So, especially when you do you like your finishing off. And obviously, as you get into a rhythm with the sewing and you're catching from one side like I am now, it becomes that much easier. I always think sometimes when you're starting off, maybe you've not got the rhythm and you've not got the fabric and the needle in your hand in the right, in the correct way. But once you've got the position, a bit like, I suppose, if you were knitting or you're crocheting, once you've got your needles and your thread, your wool in the right position around your hand, then it starts to become a rhythm and it starts to actually work quite nicely and you're quite happy with the way that that neatly is going together. In a way, it's like if you were crimping a pie. So if you were making a pie and your little fingers and your thumb go round to crimp the pie, I think it's a bit like that as well. So there's plenty online of different stitches or even things that you can uh, print off to show you how to do different types of finishing stitches, hemming stitches and things like that. So if you're a bit sort of maybe you've got very limited knowledge or um, in your repertoire of ways to finish things, do have a look and see what you can find online um, as in different ways to finish off and to close things because it's all out there like this is today. I'm nearly getting to the end. And then just close the end with a knot, trim off. And there we are, I've got another one. I'll let you just finish them all off and then we're gonna have a show and tell. Let's see what all the chickens are at the end.
bring in the other one as well. Do you know, um, the two of them that I did for samples, they were made on the sewing machine. And this one that I made today, obviously, I hand sewn that. And there is no difference. You cannot see really any difference in what's hand sewn and which one's machine sewn, which is quite nice. And remember that you can do them in different sizes. So if you think, well, that's not quite big enough or it's not quite small enough. Remember, if you cut your square slightly smaller, you can trim down your no, your beak and your little wattle and your comb. You can make that bigger, smaller, and then you can do some more. They could even become, I mean, apart from um, pattern weights, I have seen them made and they become juggling um, little sort of like weights. So you can learn to juggle with these as well. So if you don't make them into chickens, just make plain little triangles or pyramids. They can become something like that as well. How do you think, Rachel? How has everyone got on? Um, hang on a second. I was just putting that onto the uh, old Instagram. Yes. Um, yeah, let's have a little look around the room. Let's have a look around the room. Uh, okay, so Colette is coming up first. Let's yeah. highlight. Oh. Ah, well done, Colette, because That's Colette. Right. That's lovely. Yeah, I first started when I love him, except my room was covered in rice, but it's been loads <laughs> of fun. I really liked him. <laughs> you guys, I did it, and it's a great stash buster. I love it. Thank you. Brilliant. Well done, Colette. About your first monkey experience. Yes. Yes. So hopefully you will come back on another class now, Colette. I'll be signing up for lots after this. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you sign up to the newsletter because it comes out every Friday, and that's where we tell you about the classes that are happening. So... And sometimes classes sell out. So, um, you know, when we start advertising them on Instagram. So the newsletter is the, the best place. So if you go to the website and the pink box pops up, uh, just, put, just put in your details there and you get the newsletter. Brilliant. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, who else do we have here? Uh, hello, Steiner, by the way. How are you, my lovely? Always there with a smile. Um, oh, we've got Virginia. Let's have a look at Virginia. Okay, replace Spotlight. There we go. Oh. Fabulous! Oh, nice. Lovely. Nice. That's lovely. There you go. Um, I'm going to make some out of felt and backstitch them, but I'm going to put the grains I've got in a little calico bag inside so they don't leak out. But I've yeah. got loads of lovely wool felts, and I really would like to make some really nice embroidered chickens out of the felt and do the on the outside, but then yeah. put bag make a little cotton bag in this shape to go inside and then put the felt outer and really make a feature of them because I love it it's really cute yeah. it's That's so good. cute isn't it I think yeah. if you had those on a craft stall I think people would buy those they'd just be so cute absolutely you could have pin cushions but I, I like it with the grains in I'm, I'm going to make some little ones as well I might even make little chicks to go with it smaller ones and make <laughs> little chicks so that they can be smaller pattern weights yeah, well. yeah. Pretty cute. Little, nice Virginia you can have little yellow ones couldn't you just get yeah. yellow and little yellow chicks with maybe orange beaks and that'd look really cool then wouldn't it I, I'm actually I will I will just remember what you said about having if you wanted to have the grains in a little bag to take out and that's probably a really good idea if for instance I did once um do a class where we stuff we did stuff um um the, some little houses with um with rice and um some one of my ladies uh, put it on her damp windowsill and the rice absorbed the damp and then started to like regrow so i would say your little chickens don't put on a damp windowsill put them somewhere nice and dry because if you are particularly maybe where you work your studio you might have a she shed where you're doing your sewing in the shed at the bottom of the garden and it might be a bit damp as the autumn comes on so remember to bring your chickens home to roost don't let them get damp will you <laughs> because they might <laughs> they might start sprouting little little rice paddies <laughs> I managed to a lot of um, the grains that you put inside the microwavable sand. yeah yeah so they're pretty robust I think they'll be okay but yeah great dear gary and i've loved it thank you thank you my darling uh let's go on to pauline now oh. sorry pauline with her Hi. liberty chicken um, am i unmuted you are yes. all right yeah uh, yeah unfortunately it's got a sort of turquoise beak because i didn't have any yellow but yeah i'm really really pleased with it i used um 
lizard, a litter, I suppose it is. All right. Um, and it, it's something else that keeps your pins really sharp. Right. Um, yeah. I also did it by machine because yes. my hand sewing stuff is down in my, my hexi bag. But yeah, I've really enjoyed this. It's been great. And I'm not a beginner sewer. So yeah, no. I would say it's for everybody, definitely. Oh, that's, well, that's really good. Thank you. Because um, it is, it doesn't, like you're right, it doesn't have to be, um, one, it doesn't have to be hand stitched. It can be machine stitched. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, it's, it's not really a beginner thing. It's just a handy thing to have. And in fact, you know, us more experienced sewers do like these little things that just weight things down. You know, yes. you think, well, you know, we've grabbed things to hand, like, you know, I've got an old, some old pebbles that I put down on my patterns while I'm cutting them all out. Well, these are just much more cuter than an old pebble. <laughs> <laughs> or, or a hand weight. <laughs> yeah. 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 You just put that down and then that's, um, yeah, that'll yeah. hold it down. So this, so this, is, this is much nicer. So, yeah. yeah, I'll definitely be making more of those. I've got a huge amount of a uh, scrap stash. Well, I think so, he looks very regal, your chicken, actually, with that blue. <laughs> regal. Regal I'll, get, I'll get some yellow felt for my next ones. <laughs> I used, I actually used cam snaps for the yeah. eyes. Yeah. Ah, really good. Yeah. Perfect. Well done, quickly did that. I, Yeah, I didn't have any eyes, and I had some little round buttons, but, yeah, I decided just on the spur of the moment while you were doing it to use cam snaps, so that's another thing that you could use. Yeah. So thank you very much. I've really enjoyed it. You are Brilliant. welcome, Pauline. You are welcome. Thank you for joining us. Linda, let's have a look at Linda. Hey, Linda. Oh, I like the um, the red and black together. Oh, red and grey. It's nice. Yes. It's, yeah, it's brown. <laughs> it's brown. It looks quite sophisticated, actually, isn't it? Yeah. Very nice. Oh, uh, sophisticated chicken. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Anita, are you ready? Okay, brilliant. Let's have a look at Anita. Oh, now this is a very Spanish chicken, isn't it? Look at that. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> very Spanish. That's He's very nice. cute, isn't he? Yeah. I love them. Yeah. Have you had good time, Anita? Yes, thank you. That was lovely. And, and I was using today really as a test of whether um, my internet to, um, was good enough. Um, so I'm looking forward to signing up for some more classes because I haven't done one since we moved out here. <laughs> uh, okay, lovely. Um, okay, Jan, have you got anything, Jan? Okay, let's uh, show Jan's very yellow chicken from what I can see. Oh, he's oh. Wow. Yes, a very yellow shui shui chicken. Shui shui. <laughs> very good. Nice. Brilliant. Yeah, really Jordan. nice. Nice choice. I have, and even the, oh, I've done it. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So I've got an upside down beak. <laughs> okay. Oh. But, you know, it's going to still do the job. And it's I've got more fabric. Yeah. And I feel quite bad. Oh. Oh, it's because I am oh. expert. But I enjoyed it, and it's going to do the job, and it's just going to be a little quirky one. Exactly. I think that an upside down beat makes more sense because he could just literally walk around and like, you know, wait for the, se the seed and stuff to come out of the shoots, you know, when he's, if he's in the <laughs> arms chicken and he could just literally take it in. Yeah. Thank you very much. And yeah, I, well. I want to start dressmaking again. So I've got quite a few to get me ready for my pattern cutting. So thank you. Well done. Annie, watch this space because Gary is going to be coming back doing some lounge pants, but out of Jersey fabric. Is that right, yeah, Gary? Yeah, so Ooh. yeah, we're going to try, we're going to do some lounge pants. We've done lounge pants once before, but we did it in a woven fabric. This time we're going to do it in a stretch jersey. And so we're going to do that. I'd like to also, um, possibly we might put a pocket in there as well. So um, it would be really nice for you to... Um, join us then but so we'll do a little um pattern cutting day at, well a session and some sewing so if you'd like to come to that that's going to be later on in the year um coming into the autumn so at the moment we're just rachel's on my back to get it done and dusted get all the paperwork done and the the, the photographs but um we'll get that done for you because uh, the last one we did was really really exciting and it lots of people joined us so it'd be nice to see you there yeah lovely okay um oh, thank you thank you you're welcome 
Um, okay, do we have anybody else who would like to show their little chicken? Ruthie! And then we've got Sarah. Okay, Ruthie. So Ruth and then Sarah. So there you go, Ruth. Ah, hello, Ruthie. <laughs> hello. Lovely. Lovely. Oh, oh I love the fabric. Very nice fabric. Very nice. It's amazing what you can do with a pair of pyjama buttons. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah. So is that pyjama, like um, that lovely, like um, soft brush cotton? Brush cotton, yeah. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, he's probably then quite cuddly, I'd imagine. He is yeah. quite sweet. The cat quite likes him. <laughs> yeah. As I was trying to sew him together, but uh, he's up now. Oh, thank you, Ruthie. Oh, thank bye, you. Annie. Annie's got to go. So, all right, Annie. Thank you very much for coming and take care. Thank you, Ruthie. He's lovely. We love him. Uh, let's have a look at Sarah then next. Sarah. Hi, right, can you hear are. me? <laughs> yeah. I've decided I'm going to make some big ones as doorstops because I think they look really cute. Yes. Mm, yes, what a good idea. And with additional, what about some towel feathers then? Adding oh, yeah, some, that'd be good. Yes, couldn't you? Think about maybe making some sort of feather shapes and then trapping them in that far bottom corner to stand up. So that would look quite good, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, definitely do some yeah. tail feathers. I yeah. thought I could make some to match different room decors. So yeah, yeah. Use up some old fabric. Yeah. yeah. And then obviously, really, you can weight them down with the rice, but you could use like pea gravel or something like that in there. And again, if, if you didn't make a calico bag, what you could do is just pour the gravel into a little freezer bag, make sure you get the air out of it, and then put that in there with it as well. And then that would be really, really, um, you know, really quite sturdy. Weighty but also the gravel would then be contained within a little plastic bag inside it as well. You could still put wadding and stuff around that, but as long as you get it nice and, and heavy, then that would definitely keep the door open. And I just think, well, yeah, brilliant idea. Really good. Great, I'll try that. <laughs> yeah. And I remember you, Sarah, with your fantastic back wall, because it's- With the beach. The, <laughs> yeah, it's the beach, isn't it? I remember. I remember. That's where you want to be right now. <laughs> That's where I want to be right now, Sarah. <laughs> oh, never mind. Thank you so much, my lovely. Um, okay. Jill, let's have a look. Jill. Oh, oh. Nice. Nice I like the fabric. Again, there's some lovely choices of fabric today. And there, we're all. Oh, you're muted, Jill. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you could do with a little bit more stuffing, I think, is a bit. Um, yeah, been a bit mean on the stuffing. A little bit more in there. <laughs> but you know it's funny these fabrics coming out today i think everyone's quite summery still there's all these lovely summery bright fabrics coming out really great lovely thank you jill did you have a good time yes really enjoyed it thank you yeah brilliant look to You're sign up this one thank you i've been to a couple of your um sort of top gary's now so i need to just take the plunge <laughs> Yes, yeah, there are some really great classes coming up so yeah please do um yeah, Lisa says uh, she's using the Jama pants that she made with Gary last time as a windbreak. Yes, I remember. They were huge, weren't they, Lisa? <laughs> Something went terribly wrong and they were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the first time I did them, it was, there was something way off. So we had to redraft in the break. And then I think I overcompensated. Yeah. And when I showed her my friend, she went, oh, they make your ankles look really tiny. <laughs> <laughs> it was like I'm well aware of the state of them you don't have to try and make me feel better I sent you oh. value uh, <laughs> yeah they're about you could have got like me and the rest of the class in them yeah so you're gonna chicken to out of the leftover yeah. fabric the chicken was made of the same fabric look at that look at that still going <laughs> well I'm glad you're back Nice to see you again. Yes, as always, we love our Lisa. Always. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Uh, Deborah, let's have a look at Deborah. Hello, I've Deborah. Um, hi. I have managed to re-sew it slightly ah. sloppily because nice. I had definitely got it wrong. Oh, no, that's nice. I look I a like little bit the eye. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I had to get buttons. I couldn't get any toy things. And I no. did the wattle, I know, too far away from there, but... Overall, he's all right. It'll work for me. I think he's great. Yeah, absolutely. Lovely. Yeah. Really yeah. lovely. Well done. Well he's done. Got lovely, uh, he's got that lovely. Mediterranean 
feel look about him as well, Deborah. You can see I'm obsessed with the Mediterranean at the moment, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, <nice. laughs> Enjoy London. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I used to live there for 20 years, so it's not like it's a new place for me either. It's ridiculous. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you, Deborah. Is there anybody else? Anybody else? Are we done? Oh, Tracy. Tracy Santry is sitting on top of the uh, sewing machine there. Let's look at Tracy. There you go, Tracy. Lovely. Yeah. Oh, well done. He's stuffed with beads. Oh. With beads. Be because I'm in the middle of building a studio in the garden and I just thought that all the other options <laughs> don't know why I didn't. Yeah. work. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And also remember I said about if you've got a shed or like a studio in the garden, it might get a little bit damp in the autumn yeah. or winter. So you need that's, to think about that. Yeah, That's kind of what I was thinking. So we have a big pot of beads, so we're using them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Lovely. I'm Brilliant. going to make him some brothers and sisters this afternoon. Aww. So Tracy, are, what, the shed, are you going to call it a she shed? Are you going to call it a shoffice or is it just your sewing room? What are you going to call oh, I've it? I've got a sign to go on it that calls it the sewing cabin. The sewing cabin, yes. That sounds good. I like that. Uh, it's been a long yeah. time coming. At the moment, it's just a very expensive pile of wood in the garden. <laughs> But hopefully, in the, next, in the next few weeks, the man will come and build it. So, yeah. oh, well, listen, people, that has been a lot of fun. Um, have you all really, you have all really enjoyed yourself, haven't you, today? Yeah. It's been nice, hasn't it? And, you know, it's been nice because we haven't had a class for so long. Um, so it's been, it's been lovely, actually, just as a little freebie thrown in. Um, and the next time I'll see some of you, any of our VIP members, of course, it's Gary's VIP meeting. It's and that this is month. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We, I don't know if anybody's seen on the VIP page, we've changed the date. It's the 19th of August now. Um, yeah. Which is next week, isn't it? Yes. yes it's, okay. um, Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. Thursday. Thursday evening. We'll have a gathering and a chit chat and a show and tell and all sorts of things. And I've already, I mean, if any of you do belong to the VIP club, I've already been interacting with some of the work that people are putting up on there. So um, it's worth having a look, you know, see what we're doing. But it'd be nice for the show and tell this week. I'm looking forward to it. And I think we're going to get a lot out of it. So if you're not a VIP member, go and have a look because... It's about me this month, isn't it? Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> it's all about Gary. It's all about me. Right. Okay. Lovely people. I'm now going for lunch with Janet Clare. Mm. Have a nice lunch. Yes, I'm looking forward to that. Um, so I hope you all have the rest of a lovely day. Thank you, Annie. She says um, thank you to you both. Yeah. Thank you to our lovely Gary. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's lovely. Lovely way to spend a Sunday morning <laughs> with yeah, all of you. We love it. Um, so thank you very much uh, thank you to everybody have a lovely rest of the day and I'll see you all when you next come on a class and there's loads more been, um, loads more been loaded loads more classes been loaded and some new tutors and so just keep watching the website and subscribe and then get all the news alright lovely people see you all very soon thank, this will be on you. thank you very much yeah. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.